Look, dear meatballs, this is Tiffany. Here we are in her charming kitchen in a wonderful neighborhood in Prince Rupert. And we're going to make deer meatballs with noodles and marinara sauce, but no grain. No noodles. No real noodles. No real noodles. So instead of noodles, because I'm celiac and you're grain free, free. Um, I use spaghetti squash. Okay. This way you're still getting that noodle texture because you can shred it to make noodles. Right, right. But you're not getting any of the grain. There's no, it's not a rice noodle. It's nothing. It's just... A squash. It's another vegetable So another instead. vegetable. Also another way to get more vegetables into your meals if Wonderful. you're looking for another way. Um, I find them to be delicious and super easy to make. All right. So all I do is I'm careful when cutting yeah. spaghetti squash because it is quite thick. Sort of oh, get it in. yeah, look at that. And then you just crack it in half. Always this little end nubbin is the part you got to worry about where you're going to cut your fingers off. Oh. And then just like you do when you're carving a pumpkin, you just oh, yeah. want to scrape out the seeds in the middle because they're not really super edible. I'm sure you could uh, roast them up or whatnot if you There's not a whole to, lot though in a squash. No, there's just that little bit of fibrous membrane kind of in the middle. So you just take that out. Super simple. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're not really too worried about that. You're just trying to get out the seeds really. And then all I ever do is I just sort of drizzle it with a little olive oil. Perfect. And some salt and pepper. And then you just pop it in the oven. And if you do this at the beginning, it'll be done and cooked by the time everything else is ready to go. So just put it on a baking sheet like so. And then I just do a little salt, a little pepper. And just a little bit of the olive oil, which super simple, just drizzle. Just oh, like I like your, your spigot thing. Yeah, yeah. Your fingers. Some of the best parts about cooking are using your hands, so why not, right? Sometimes I'll just make sure that it's all, yeah, like rolled around. So I've already preheated the oven to 350 degrees. 350. And then you can just, honestly, I do them for about half an hour, but if you cook it longer, it's not ever really gonna get totally mush. So you can just pop it in and kind of forget about it. So put that in there. And then that's it for your noodles, really. When they come out, you just shred it. Right. Put it on a pile and that's it. So I'm gonna get rid of this so we can do step two. All right, so. Deer meatballs. Deer meatballs. So usually your friends give you deer meat, but yes. they were out? Uh, yep, my friend Cody normally supplies the deer meat because he's a hunter and he can get it. You know, he takes a deer and then brings me some ground beef or, or ground deer, I guess. Yeah. And, or sausages sometimes. Oh, oh yeah. So good, deer sausage. So I don't know if I've ever had deer before. It's um, a little bit of a gamier meat, mm -hmm. really lean. So oh, yeah. you do want to make sure to add some fat into it. Otherwise, it's going to fall apart as a meatball. But it's quite lean, really tasty. So Yeah, there's very little in fat. In there. Yeah, a lot, very little fat. And I see you got this. This is uh, packaged at the sausage factory in yep. Smithers. It's from Smithers. I picked it up here in Prince Rupert at Maverick Mart. Um, they carry a lot of different meats oh, yeah. compared to, say, Safeway or Overy. They also have moose, oh. um, elk, oh. and they get most of it, I think, is from Smithers, from the sausage factory. Very cool. We're just going to use one package today, so let's pop this back into the fridge so that it doesn't look bad, and I want to quickly... So once you have the sausage in there, super easy. I'm gonna be using, because we're not using any grains today, sometimes I would use um, gluten-free breadcrumbs oh, yeah. to bind it together, but today I'm just gonna use some egg. So I'm gonna pop in two eggs. I rarely cook with measurements. Okay, good. So, oh, sorry. Just throw so a little I'm kind bit of, this. of, yeah, I, I will look at a recipe and then sort of be like, okay, I have the gist of it, and go from there. <laughs> okay. Not really a measurement kind of girl. So, two eggs, always salt and pepper. You always want to season always your season meats. Your food, yeah. Especially meat, like if you're doing it into something, like if you're making meatloaf or whatever, you want to season it before you shape it. 
Oh, it's because more after that, it's harder. Then you're only going to get the outsides. If it's oh, a ground meat, you want that flavor to be, to be throughout. all the way throughout. So very good. Then I'm using a little bit of Worcestershire, and this one is the Heinz because it's gluten free. Oh, okay. I'm going to look at the a ingredients. A lot of them have minute. some flour in them. Oh yeah. So you got to check for ingredients. And then I just do probably three or four dashes, just enough to sort of get a little smell in there. Yeah, it's a good one. And then I'm going to toss in fresh parsley. Just enough to sort of give a little green taste to it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no grains in there. Don't need to chop it if you don't want to. You can just sort of rip it. It's not, Excellent. Not going for any sort of super finesse here. We're just getting some And what does the parsley do? Why are we adding parsley? Uh, it gives it a nice fresh taste. Oh, okay. Like I said, it's sort of for me is a little bit just like, okay, yeah, that looks like enough. It's probably a tablespoon ish yeah. of the parsley. Then we'll use this in the marinara too, so it's good. Now I can just take my ring off and watch because it's going to get dirty. Okay. You can just dive right in. <laughs> dive there. right in. This is the best way your hands. You can make sure that it's all the way through and it kind of, I don't know, the meat was in the fridge and I find that it's nice to kind of warm it up a little bit too. Right. Before you throw it straight in the oven. It cooks more evenly, it doesn't. Yeah, it? I feel like if it's cold and like you don't want to, definitely don't want to cook it from frozen because then you're going to have parts that defrost faster than other parts. So you're just mushing it together. Once it's all combined, we are going to add, actually, do you want to just help me with this one? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to add some Parmesan, which will also add a bit of a binder with the eggs right, instead right. of just yeah, uh, nice powdery stuff. Yeah, and flavor. shake it in there. Let's see. That's probably good. And then just a little. And then I'm just going to mix that in as well. Also, when the cheese melts a little bit, the gooiness will mm, help bind mm, it together. Mm. Gooiness. The gooiness. That's a technical term. Yeah. <laughs> you could use any cheese, really, if you wanted to. You could put shredded mozzarella in there. Oh, that would be good, oh, too. Yeah. But the first time I made these was for a Godfather marathon. And we needed some sort of you know Italian yes. dish for dinner. So yes. we made the meatballs. All right, so now they're very well mixed from what you can see, nice and combined. And you're just gonna wanna shape them. So we're gonna bake our meatballs because you don't want, if you're already having this much of clean eating as they call it yeah. these days, why not just bake them? And then that way you're also getting less fat. You don't need anything in there to um, like fry them in. You just bake them. Just so bake I them. just put them into like golf ball sized little ones because the deer meat isn't as fat as the other it is going to be a little bit like beef would go a little bit more round these yeah. are going to kind of they're going to flatten they're going to take their own shape they're going to take their own shape yeah. they're they, take the shape they, they should they do what they want yes so good. and then we will put them on the baking sheet which on the baking sheet i have just put one of those um silicone pads and that way you don't have to spray it with oil either to get it to not stick to your baking sheet so and um, how do you like using that silicone stuff? I really like it. I find it difficult to clean <laughs> afterwards because it's, it holds, I find that it holds like oil. So if you've already sort of put olive oil in anything, but I throw it in the dishwasher and then if it still needs a little bit more, I just sort of give it a scrub with a sponge or one of those scrubby brushes that everybody has so in their kitchen. Sort of like a cast iron, right? It's, you're sort of seeing Yeah, it doesn't it really need to be completely and... cleaned because it is just, uh, yeah, just like a cast iron. You don't ever want to soak that cast iron. That's bad. So those are just taking, like I said, see, taking their own shapes. They don't really. So don't worry about trying to get it round or adding no. more binder. It's just, they're going to be they a little They do their flatter. own little thing. These ones feel really good though, because that, that egg, you can, can you feel how it almost feels like there's a little bit more fat in there because of the egg? I don't know. Trust me, that's what it feels like. That's what I'm feeling. <laughs> that's what you're feeling. I'm feeling the fatness of the egg. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then down to the bottom, is that two yeah, more? Just, yeah, split yeah. her in half, that's two more. And then you just scrape as much. Honestly, you can make, you can make them smaller or bigger. I mean, if you want to make jumbo meatballs, you could. Meatballs are really just one of those things that, per person, whatever your 
like, I mean, you have Swedish meatballs, Italian meatballs. It sort of just depends what you and your family like. So I'm just gonna move this over here. And then quick wash. Thank you. The sink is uh, under repair. Uh, All right, those meatballs were super easy. Yeah, they're super easy. If you wanted to, you could put rosemary in. You can sort of do your meatballs because of them being like a gamier meat. You can add, honestly, you could put a splash of balsamic vinegar in there. That uh -huh. would be really tasty. Uh -huh. You know, instead of the Worcestershire, it sort of depends what, like I said, whatever you really like. So the oven is already preheated to the 350 for the spaghetti squash, uh -huh. which is perfect because that's the same temperature for the meatballs. Oh, there we go. So now you're cooking two things at once. The meatballs take about 15 minutes. Oh, okay. And then you want to kind of flip them. Okay. Because they're going to bake instead. So we'll look at those again in 15 minutes. So I'll just timer that because I know I'll forget. Bam. All right. So what? is meatballs without marinara sauce. I'm very excited about marinara sauce because it's so expensive to buy. Oh, it's so, so easy to make that no one, no one should be buying marinara sauce okay. without making right. it themselves. Okay. So, super simple. You want to pop, right? We have a bunch of different kinds of tomato. Oh, so, hello. Oh, these ones are actually the same, so we'll get rid of that one. Okay, so we've got diced. Diced tomatoes and then strained, strained tomatoes. tomatoes. This is difficult to find in a grocery store. I find it at either there's a little Italian shop, uh -huh. they have it, or at Maverick, they also have it. It's really difficult to find it at the main grocery stores because it's more of a specialty Italian um, oh, look at these ingredients. type of tomato. Two. Tomatoes, sea salt. Per exactly. Beautiful. But this probably has the, the texture or the... the yeah. It's, flavor or they got it? really it's sun they're sun tomatoes so they've been done in the sun for a long time and then they've basically it's the, just the liquids there's no like leftover pieces of the tomato whereas the diced tomato which you also want because marinara sauce should have some texture some chunk. it's gonna have the chunkier tomatoes in it and then finally you must 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 have tomato paste i've never used this tomato paste normally comes in a can and what every single person does opens that can of tomato yeah. paste uses the two tablespoons they need and then that can sits in your fridge. Not good. You can't leave things in a can in the fridge. Not, not the tomato not good. stuff. So this, as you can see, my last one is already. Oh. You can use as much as you need, put the cap on, clever. and save it for later. OK, after opening, store in the refrigerator and use within 20 days. Yeah. I cook a lot in our house. There's oh, no way no that is lasting more than 20 days anyways. So first things first. Oh, gonna... and two ingredients again. Yeah. Tomato and salt. Yeah, so if you are on a salt, like looking for lower sodium, you can find them without salt, but tomatoes really do need a little bit of salt to bring out the flavor. Yes. Otherwise, it's going to be bland. This so you just put in the can of diced tomatoes. The sodium on this is very low. Yeah, it's yeah. mostly just to bring out the like fresh tomato. So just put in the can of diced tomatoes. One can. Done. Then we're not going to use the whole thing because it will make it too liquidy. This yeah. is really liquidy. Okay. It kind of has a consistency of tomato soup, oh. but it's all tomato. Can I have so, a little spoon? Yeah, I want to just have a little taste of that. Oh, yeah, that is like tomato soup. Yeah. That's nice and thick. Yeah, so you just, I use, I'd say probably half a cup. There's the marinara feel. That this is the, is the marinara. This, if you're not oh. using the strained, you will get tomato sauce, but you will not get that same tongue feel that yeah. you're looking for. Yeah. Now, I'm going to put this on the stove, and we're just going to bring it to a simmer before we add the tomato paste. And why are we doing that? It's the way my grandmother taught me how okay. to do it. Well, then we're doing it that way. <laughs> I don't really know why. Okay. So that's good. Well, that's it's going to take a little bit to come up. We're going to chop up a little bit of parsley and simmer. You said, yeah, it's okay. just I have it on a medium heat. Okay. Um, it will come to a little simmer on its own. If you are not the kind of person that can walk away from the stove and let it just simmer, 
I don't have a problem. I'm really good at being like, you know what? Sauce needs its own space. Yeah. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Don't be over there no, fussing. No, just leave it. Leave it. So this is just a rough chop. If you're using dried parsley, use less. Dried parsley has a more intense flavor than fresh parsley, so you don't want to use as much. And you're just going to give it a rough little chop. Watch your fingers. You got good cutting technique there, miss. Get a little rough chop Knife there. skills. Got some knife skills. Plus, I have a really nice knife. And Do you? it's sharp. If your knife is not sharp, you will cut yourself. Yeah, have a look. That's a good one. It's my chef's knife. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hinkles. Mm-hmm. Hinkles. So we'll add that after it comes to simmer. But I like to keep prepping as I'm going because nobody wants to be last minute like, oh, no, it's over boiling. And yeah, I yeah. Have it. Right. No, no, no. Now, one of the secrets to my marinara sauce is red wine. Oh. Now this is why homemade marinara sauce is better than in the canned marinara sauce because you get a more depth of flavor. Depth of flavor. Literally, I'm just doing a splash. So, well, my version of a splash, okay. probably about quarter of a cup, half of a cup, depends. Okay, and then we get some extra color. Gets a little extra color. Yeah. You can see that it's just gonna add some extra flavor. Just stir it in. We're still waiting for and the it alcohol. To will, um, it, all the alcohol evaporates. Just the flavor. Whenever you cook anything with alcohol, the alcohol content cooks off. And all you're left with is the flavor. So when you are picking a red wine, pick one you would actually like the taste of. Because mm -hmm. the taste will still be there. Mm -hmm. So if you use a red wine you don't like, it's probably not going to taste very good to you. Right? Yeah. And then we'll also just do a little dash of pepper because. It already has salt. It already it. has salt. So salt you can do at the end if you feel like, okay, it still needs a little salt flavor to it. But I like to just do it pepper at the beginning, let it take its time, and then you'll see that these will actually, the texture, the, they'll mash down a little bit, those diced tomatoes. The bits. They'll get a little bit softer. You don't have to puree it. Some people do. Oh, wow. Well. I like the chunkiness myself. Yeah, you want a bit of texture. And I just kind said. of squish them a little bit. And as, squishing as I is, squishing is, is fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. You could always use a potato masher if you really wanted them, Ooh. like, flatter. Yeah, yeah. But I like a little bit of texture myself. So, there we go. Just let the, gotta wait. This is the problem sauce. Patience. Patience. So, again, very easy mm -hmm. if you have... This one. The magic yeah. ingredients and so the So we're going to add this one as soon as it comes to a little bit of a bubble. Okay. Um, tomato paste, what you don't ever want to do is don't put it in at right at the very end because it does need to cook a little bit. Otherwise, the taste of the tomato paste will be really prevalent. Yeah, like mm. straight out of the like, can. Yeah, almost. it'll be like you just like twist this and like, <sighs> and that's <laughs> right. not something that you want. You want it to meld so, and mellow a bit. Yeah, um, and then just actually going to add a little bit of garlic to this as well because really what chef doesn't use garlic you gotta have garlic that's pretty much the basis so we actually run out of it on a regular basis probably like a clove uh, a head of garlic a week i'd say oh yeah so um do you use a press if you use garlic i can show you my garlic method. sure this is to get, you know, all your anger out. Oh, yeah. That's what I do, too. Way better. And then it's easy to peel. Yep. Easy peel. Bam. Bam. And then, I don't know, some people are really fussy. Oh, you have to take no. this little end off. Honestly, if you're using a press, sometimes you don't even have to peel it. Oh. Because if you press it, the peel will stay inside and this, this garlic will oh. come out. But I prefer this method because it, I feel like it releases the juices of the garlic. Yeah. And then there's yeah, more sometimes flavor. Yeah, it sprays. Right, there's already yeah. flavor like yeah. out there. So I'll just give that a quick little chop. Again, watch your fingers. Watch your fingers. Watch your fingers. And it's just a rough chop. The best thing about sauce is that unless you're going for like a very smooth, creamy, mm -hmm. like white sauce usually. Oh uh, yeah. You don't really have to be too careful because it have to be just has smooth. to be in there. It doesn't have to be super um, clean. So it's just coming to a boil now. Or oh, a bubbly. A bubble. A bubble. We're just simmering, so it's not going to come to a full boil. So we'll just do that, and now we'll add the garlic and the parsley. Oh, yeah, bubbling nicely. Yeah, a little bubbles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That didn't take too long. No, it doesn't take too long. No one saw that. <laughs> <laughs> he 
bits of you. Stir it in. Now at this point, once it is bubbling, we're gonna add that tomato paste like I said, but All you'll right. wanna keep an eye on it because you don't want it to stick to the bottom. So with this, you can use measurement, but it's like a good squeeze. Yeah, a good squeeze. A good squeeze. Like, like your grandma. Yeah, like, mm, that's good. Oh. You know, okay. like about two tablespoons. Okay. And then we're just gonna mix it in real well. And then just still want the tomato texture in Can there. Can I do it a try? Yeah, squish it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's just broken down a little bit more. Yeah, so it's not like a chunk of tomato on there when you're... Oh. Oops, splashy, yeah. splashy. That's what kitchens are made for. You clean it later. So you can smell the... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now this is where my problem of not cooking with a recipe comes in. I can smell mm -hmm. that it needs something else. Oh, okay. Like I'm like, mm, it's too just tomato. Tomato -y. Just too tomato. So another spice or something? I would probably add another splash of wine or mm -hmm. one of my secrets that I always end up putting in my uh -huh. marinara uh -huh. sauce uh -huh. is I always end up putting a splash of balsamic vinegar. Oh. Because I feel like that vinegar sort of complements the tomato. And here, that adds. Gives it a darker yeah, yeah. feel to it, but it just gives it that something different. And I'm gonna have a little taste of that if I can have a Yeah, for spoon. sure. Balsamic vinegar of Modena. There's different kinds of balsamic vinegar. You can get a um, sweeter one. This one's more of a cooking one. So it's got a lot of, little more tang Oops. to it. Oh, darn. It's all good. See uh, that? Yeah. There we go, okay. I'm gonna turn it down just to like minimum so that it simmers and then probably just give it a stir once in a while. But that way it'll thicken up a little bit, but you won't have it cooking faster than the rest of your food. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah. just so you're barely, barely so off it. minimum is okay. where I put it. And then we have just about enough time to check the meatballs. Check the meatballs. So I'm just gonna grab, oh, they're behind you. Okay. Probably need about another five to 10 minutes. Um, so we'll just pop them back in. But we can check the spaghetti squash as well. So you can see the spaghetti squash. Like I said, it takes about a half an hour, right? And then we only have them in there for a little bit. These ones, still a little hard. Once they go squishy, Squish. they're ready. Okay. You know, technical term, squishy. <laughs> so now we're kind of in a holding pattern. We just have to be patient. Oh, and let right. it all come together. I'm walking away from the Just sauce. walk it away. Just leave it. Okay. <laughs> So, Tiffany, we've just guzzled some wine. No, mm, we just I added wish. some wine. <laughs> no, we did add about another half a cup of wine to the marinara sauce. You do need to taste as you go. Right. You'll know if it tastes too tomatoey or not, and you can add a little bit more wine or add a little more balsamic vinegar or whatever works for your taste buds. Okay. And now what? We're going to check the meatballs because I, I feel like they're ready. No. Oh. So you can see, oh yeah, so they oh, round up a little bit, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, that's looking good. They're just sort of, those juices coming out, totally normal. What we're gonna do, oh, I'm just gonna grab tongs. tongs. And we're just gonna flip them so that the other side can get a little bit browned. Meatballs just look better when they're nice and brown. All right, so these are getting much closer. You can tell because uh -huh. Getting a lot more squishy. Yeah, this one's even bubbling a bit. Yeah, a little bit of bubbling. Same within there, it's a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, those, honestly, I think these and the meatballs, five more minutes, we should be good to go. All right. Starting to get that right. Is you want to add some butter. 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 And what does the butter do? The butter is going to give it that glossy sauce feel. Mm hmm Plus, it adds a little bit of... Flavor. More flavor. More flavor. Better flavor. So I just do a little knob of butter. So a knob. A little a knob. knob. Yeah. I learned that term from Jamie Oliver, and that makes it real. Oh, okay. Right, right Jamie. Just yeah. a little knob of butter. So it's probably about a teaspoon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Plop that in there, and then just stir it in until it's melted in. Just behind you with a knife. That smelled restaurant coming out of me. Knife behind, don't back up. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> a little bit more glossy. So you see it's got a little bit of gloss. It is gonna add that little bit of flavor. 
and then you just sort of stir it in and then that should be ready to go as soon as we're ready with the other food I just, I just find the butter gives it that professional yeah. taste yeah. a little more restaurant quality yeah. 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 flavor yeah. to and, it and just not a lot of it just a just a yeah, bit just a tiny bit. Ooh, that so looks good. I'm just gonna grab a clean cutting board from behind you. Sure. All in where all of my bajillions of them are. So that's good. Problem is, it's still getting really hot. So I'm gonna keep my oven mitt on on the one right. end. And you just, well, you know what? Honestly, if you find it too hot, you can leave the oven mitt on. But you don't have as much dexterity. Yeah. And I really like to be able to get in there. Yeah. So you just want to shred Look at it. That. See how it comes out? I would have done it that way. I would have done it the wrong way. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I think you would probably do it both ways. But I just noticed the grain of the way that the squash itself is going. So I just kind of like, like I said, it is quite hot. So you're kind of like, hey. But see how it looks noodly. Noodle. Okay. Noodles. Yep. Yeah. I would say per person, you're probably gonna want about half a squash. So for you and I, this is gonna be one side each, just because I feel like that's enough. Uh, I like to have you know a vessel for my ah. dear meatballs. I'm gonna pick so, out on the meatballs. I think. No, that's fine. Yeah. Well, we'll just plate one for a present. Well, yeah. We or we could plate four. Four. Yeah. You never feed the camera guys? Yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, so you have that. There's your pasta. Beauty. And then the meatballs sound like they're probably ready. At this point, I'll remove the sauce from the heat just so it doesn't over overcook because it's just right now. Just watch behind you because I have oven open. So those look great. You can see That's that they've like oh, firmed up. Lovely. You can probably where did I put my thingy? There it is. Yeah. So those have come out nice. All right. So we'll just have to do the other one of these. And then that should be so hot. The foodles. Beautiful. There we go. Don't worry, there's still enough for a lot more. Okay, no <laughs> All right. So then, this is how I, this is how I serve mine. I get a meatball, and another meatball, usually three, because who doesn't love meatballs, right? And then I'll grab a ladle. Got a nice little ladle of the marinara. Look how beautiful that is. Put that on there, and then you gotta have a little parm. Yeah. A little bit of parmesan. And if I'm trying to be fancy, which you should always do. Yes. As far as I'm concerned, you should always try to be fancy. Just put a little parsley on top. Oh, of it. Look oh. at that. Restaurant quality meals. It's wonderful. <laughs> so we'll set up these two as well. I'm gonna try the meatball first. I'm so excited to try the deer. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I hadn't had deer until I moved here, and now I'm like, wow, that is a definite. That is it's that good. Nice, dense. Mm -hmm. It didn't crumble too much, which can be a problem with deer, because, like I said, there's not as much fat to bind it together. It's just a beautiful meatball. It doesn't taste oh. gamey at all. No. It doesn't taste exactly like beef. Mm mm. Got a little different taste to it, mm -hmm. but it's not something crazy, and it's a lot leaner, so mm -hmm. it's better for you, I guess. It tastes to me a wee bit, a bit like lamb, a wee bit. Yeah, yes, it has but, a bit of a lamb taste to yeah. it. I never thought of it that way before. And, and the texture a little bit. Mm. Running around. <laughs> Seems very lots, lots of jogging. Yeah. Mm. That's about today. Mm. Now I'm going into the marinara. <laughs> I'm just going to eat all of it because mm -hmm. it's so tasty. Mm -hmm. Just go. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's making mm -hmm. me a little bit weak in the knees. <laughs> so many layers of flavor. Not too tomatoey. 
and the balsamic vinegar. I love that taste. I yeah, love that. It's I'm good, gonna, right? I'm gonna throw that in from now on. Yeah. I also like the balsamic, that little hint of it mm -hmm. with the lamb, or the, sorry, the lamb, with the deer. Yeah. I like the two together. Yeah. 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 Add some brightness. Yeah. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 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 I just like how fresh this spaghetti squash is. It's it's so yummy and it's a little al dente. Like mm -hmm. you want your just like noodles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. You got it. There. So if you're watching the show, you should consider coming on as my next guest chef. We can travel around the Northwest. And uh, we're looking for traditional recipes, uh, local gardens, and wild food. And we had a traditional recipe from Grandma with the yeah. sauce and the wild food with the deer meat. Yeah. Uh, watch us again next time only on City West Community Channel 10. Again, congratulations. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. It's always good. People like this meat. Yeah. <laughs>